Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? It's Linda. Great. Hello. We're just waiting for Michael and a few more folks uh, before we get started. So um, I'm just going to mute myself and or it's good. It's nice to see many of you. So we talk away. I'll, talk, I'll see you in a minute. While we are waiting, uh, Sally is with us and she's in the dining room with the elders. Sally, are you there? Let's wave, see everybody. I don't know, maybe she's not there. Let's see. Hopefully she's there. We're still waiting on a that should work. Yeah, oh, I hear someone. Oh, yeah. oh. That should work. Oh, where's Sally? <laughs> I want this part. <laughs> I got it finally figured out here. Oh, we've got Michael here now, too. That's good. I I had to find it. I don't think I it's did. us. I think it's them, but I'm not sure. Oh, Sally, I was just wondering if you had a camera. We were going to say hi to the elders. Ugh. That's okay. But we have a dining room full of. Oh, elders good. Enjoying well, today. Well, hi, elders. We have Marilyn as well. <laughs> Our hi, Marilyn. Council president. I can't answer, but I don't know if you can even hear me. Uh, okay. 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 We'll get back on track. Michael's here. We'll we'll mute everybody and we'll get started. Oh, we're actually, this is, we're starting. This is just so weird on just this computer thing. I don't know. Um, welcome everybody, uh, which is strange because I only look at Linda on my computer right now. <laughs> but for everybody who is out there, uh, in Cyberland. This is St. Luke's uh, annual State of the Home meeting, which we have uh, pursuant to our bylaws. It's open to all of our members of St. Luke's, all of our supporters and donors, and anyone who's interested, and of course our elders, to talk about what's happened over the past year at St. Luke's. We would like to obviously have had this in person. That would be much easier. 
Um, but we are continuing with uh, the little tricks that we've learned over the year for how to deal with Zoom over the internet and trying to get this done. Um, we've faced a very challenging year, but we've stayed safe and we're optimistic about the coming years. And we'll be talking about that as uh, more as we get into it. I think with those welcome remarks, I will now move on to section two, which is the nominations. And I will do the nominations on behalf of the Governance Committee. And I think we're getting her picture. This is Rosemary Bright, who is being nominated to the Board of Directors. Rosemary uh, is currently the Business Development Director at Lloyd Construction. She's driven by a passion for meeting new people and learning what inspires them. And she has been working in the business development field in Southern Arizona since 2012. A Tucson resident since 2001, she has enjoyed being involved in the local design, real estate, and construction industry from several perspectives, beginning with an architecture and eventually transitioning to the construction side. In addition to her experience in business development, Rosemary has over 17 years of agricultural experience in commercial, institutional, and residential projects. A registered architect in Arizona, she also carries the LEED AP credential and strives to foster a sustainable approach to all projects. Rosemary graduated cum laude with a bachelor in architecture from the University of Oklahoma and earned an MBA with concentration in marketing, marketing from Argosy University. Rosemary has also been an active and invaluable member of our master planning com committee, particularly in helping us estimate the costs that it will be involved in both uh, the new construction that we have abandoned, but now the costs that we have in renovating our building and how we can plan for those. We do anticipate that St. Luke's may have agreements or contracts with Lloyd Construction in the future. Um, we've made it clear that Rosemary will not participate in any of these decisions and therefore there will not be a conflict of interest in that area. Uh, with that, um, I suppose we vote on whether to have her by the board members. And I can't see any of them. <laughs> Michael, if you go to your view on your oh, okay, gallery, there we go. There okay, we there go. they are. Hi, folks. Yes. People. <laughs> okay. This is so much nicer. Um, for the board members, um, do I have a motion on nominating? I made the motion, I guess. Do I is there a vote to um elect rosemary bright to the board of directors well, i'll second your nomination michael oh that that's good thank you Terry. Yeah. all right <laughs> okay now we can vote um all in favor say aye or raise your aye. hand aye anybody opposed say no or raise your hand i don't see any but oh, who knows i only got half there we go okay we got a bunch of stuff um rosemary is therefore elected with that, we can move on to item three, which is the board president's address. From the closure of St. Luke's last year in March with the start of the COVID pandemic, this has obviously been an extremely challenging and unusual year. Our plans that we had at the start of the year were put in the back seat as we spent most of our time and efforts making sure we kept our staff and elders safe. Nonetheless, we have with our committees proceeded to look at various areas in which we can continue to grow and improve our financial sustainability. As Linda will report in her report, we've made it through the year safely. We've regularly tested staff and elders, and when appropriate, we've tested the elders, and we've avoided any of the COVID infection among our elders. The board is particularly proud and thankful for all the work and that our management, our staff, the families of our staff have done to keep our elders safe and to all our elders who have gone through and endured the various COVID pro protocols with grace and dignity and helped us within the home of making sure that we follow those protocols and maintain a safe environment. Overall, the work of the board of the staff, we were able to survive a difficult fundraising year. We were helped in that with five months of payroll expenses that were covered by the Federal Stimulus Payroll Protection Plan or PPP funds. And with that have managed to at least squeak through this year 
and can work on next year. We have also, with all of that, had some happy highlights. These included the hug tunnel, the car parade, the music performances, and our first Silver Chef competition, which was won by our own Selena Miramontes. During the year, the board and its committees have continued to pursue the future development of St. Luke's, and particularly how we can come more financially stable and improve and expand our services we can provide to our elders in the community. We are very grateful to have had on our board and or on our committees, members and supporters of the community who have been on both the, develop, on the development, quality control and master planning committees. And I want to thank them for their gracious service to St. Luke's out of a strong belief in, an, in our mission and the vision that we are working towards. The development and master planning committees um, having moved off of the residential structure to be constructed and the Huntington House have looked particularly into the area of renovations. We are currently looking at fundraising for those projects and trying to determine how we can manage that. Um, during the course of the year, as part of our master planning and development, we examined that we had a feasibility study on whether or not we could can actually construct those and raise the funds and determined that that was not practical at this time. As such, we will not be doing that and the staff will be moving back into the home, the administrative staff will move back into the home in May. We, are, we do recognize that renovations are not something that's optional. Um, these are things we have to do and the Master Planning and Development Committee are working on how do we prioritize these? How do we make sure that the, the renovations we construct are properly done so that we don't uh, do one before another one has to intrude on that? We don't put tile down before we have to put machines all over it to take equipment in and other those things. And so that's what they're working on. And the development committee is working in conjunction with the master planning committee to determine how we can structure the timing of that over the next several years and how we can raise funds for those and focus on different areas that need renovation. The development committee has also been re reviewing our fundraising and grant activities to see how we can improve and strengthen them, including board involvement in the thankathon and anniversary letters. We have really, I think, improved over the past year in our fundraiser, and I think that's uh, we have to thank our fundraising people for that because we've done a very good job of increasing our contact with our donors and the personal service that we provide and the personal interest. We are continuing to review our digital fundraising that was necessary in the unit in, during the year of COVID and which obviously had some problems during the year of COVID. Um, and I think we're finding out uh, where we can establish our particular niche in the future we will continue to work on a viable and uh, interesting social media presence as we go forward. The board is also exploring the possibility of obtaining state all text program funds for some of our elders who are eligible for those funds, which would both enable them to stay for a longer period and would improve our long-term financial sustainability. The Governance Committee, in addition to nominating uh, Rosemary Bright, has been considering uh, the candidates we need for the board and has worked on updating our matrix of areas and expertise and interest for board members and where we need to look for new members. We've also been looking on the Governance Committee at confidentiality and conflicts of interest, and we're taking a somewhat small look at bylaws and the current relevance and this year we'll be working on both a board assessment tool and reviewing some of the whole the homes personnel and practice administrative practice policies. The finance committee has regularly reviewed detailed monthly financial reports to ensure that we're doing our best to stay within our budget. The committee revi revised the budget presentations and helped determine how to allocate the federal monies within the budget process. The Finance Committee reviewed cash on hand, analyzed projections for availability of liquidity of resources for St. Luke's home, which resulted in the full board of directors approving a formal line of credit agreement, as well as pulling funds for operations from investment from liquid investment accounts.
The committee caught a misstatement missed during the audit related to the presentation of the PPP funds, which resulted in an amendment to the June 30, 2020 audited financial statement and an amendment to the fiscal year 2990 IRS filings. The amendments allowed for more accurate reporting and treatment of PPP funds on those documents. The Finance Committee has also been reviewing regularly the portfolio performance with our investment manager, Matt Rosen, and will continue to evaluate how our holdings should be adjusted to better fit St. Luke's needs for liquid and stable investments. Finally, the Quality Control Committee has regularly reviewed issues regarding the operation of the home and incidents and events within, within the home. While it is focuses, focused primarily on licensing issues in the past, it has begun and will continue to expand its focus to look at other risk management issues in the home to see that we can run the home as the best as possible, both safely and securely for everybody. With that, I've completed my address and the committee reports, and we can move to item four, which is the CEO address from Linda Hollis. Linda? Great. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming today. It's Great to see many friends and, and family here and the board for all your support as well. Uh, again, I wish I could see the, the dining room and wave to all of everyone that is watching in, in the dining room. I am going to share my report on, um, on the screen here. So let me see how I can do this. There we go. And slideshow. Can everyone see that? Yes. Great. Okay, so my report, Michael did a great job in covering the, the logistics and the governance and all the things that we have been up to this year, really, um, along with what Michael said, my main goal was elder and staff safety. And I cannot share my gratitude to the staff and the elders uh, for maintaining a very safe home. 100% of elders remain COVID free. They continue to remain COVID free. That is unheard of. Uh, and we'll be talking about that a little bit in my presentation. So. For us or for me, my main goal was safety and we have achieved it up until this point. I wanna share a national comparison. So we look at the nation and more than 170,000 residents and staff died in long-term care facilities this year. Residents and staff of long-term care facilities were seven times more likely to die than those who did not. Those are extreme numbers in the nation and we are not that statistic. We were, didn't even have an infection. So again, a special thank you to the staff and elders for keeping us safe this year. It was, uh, a lot of, it was hard for, for all of us, uh, everyone missing their families and, and not feeling the touch and, and hug of their loved ones, but we did it together to, um, to look out for one another and, and embrace each other. One other thing I wanted to talk about today is our care for our staff. Our staff this year received uh, a bonus for hazard pay because of COVID. We knew it was difficult coming into work each day and having that risk. No staff went without pay this year. We didn't lay anybody off. And I want to talk a little bit more about this because, again, staff, uh, we did have some staff that tested positive for COVID. We ensured that they were taken care of at home or financially that their families didn't have to suffer or worry about pay while they were with uh, staying at home. If our staff had any type of symptoms, we encouraged them to stay home. And I believe that was part of um, our success of keeping COVID out of the home. Uh, 
No layoffs took place. Uh, we were excited to um, uh, quote out our health insurance. So currently, as of January 1st, we are having better health insurance for our staff um, and with a, an equal cost for uh, St. Luke's home premiums. So we looked at our goal was to keep our costs similar. Of course, it went up as all insurance premiums have gone up this year. However, we do have better coverage for our staff with less deductible and less out of pocket pay with more providers. With that, uh, we also gave uh, the, a plan for $25,000 life insurance at no cost to the staff. Prior to me coming two years ago, there was no life insurance. Uh, last year, we did have a small life insurance plan. This year with our new health insurance, we were again better to, better to give um, better service or better insurance, I guess. We also added this year 2% retirement matches for our employees. We think it's very important that as folks uh, work in the community and we want to support them in their retirement goals. So again, this just shows our, um, our compassion for our staff. Now we look at the state comparison. The Alliance of Nonprofits, Arizona Nonprofits just shared that Arizona nonprofits had to lay off 26 to 50% of staff, totaling about 2,000 employees, only to refill 414. Again, we beat the odds. We kept our staff. We improved their insurance. We, we were not one of these nonprofits. Our vaccination clinics, our vaccinations took place in February, March, and April, where a total of 96% of our elders were fully vaccinated. They are fully vaccinated and 64% of staff are fully vaccinated. Again, I want to show a national comparison. 38% of nursing home staff are vaccinated. This was in uh, end of February and 78% of long-term care residents are vaccinated. Again, it's showing that we beat the odds. We were better than the, the national numbers. Our home highlights, Michael shared some of them. Uh, St. Luke's made the news twice, so we were on TV. I think that's, that's a great accomplishment. Uh, we made the Daily Star. Uh, we had our car parade. Many of you came by to say hi. That was back in May. And then our hug tunnel in August. I, I can spend the next hour talking about home highlights, but we have a video that we want to share with all of you to really show what we did this year and how we got through the year together. Our visitors, um, it, the, even though the state had shared visitation policies early on, I was concerned about the COVID virus coming up in November and December and the holidays. Uh, in October, the state said we could open up. I was worried and I wanted to play it out and see the research as the holidays uh, came through. Uh, we were right in holding off. We kept everyone safe. Um, I know of an organization that opened up when the state opened up in October and 20 people passed away in the organization after they opened up. So we, we took our extra precaution. We waited it out. Um, so on March 25th, we opened our first phase of visitors coming in with a negative COVID test within 48 hours and outside visitations and only two visitors, essential visitors. As of April 14th, we have now expanded that our elders are going out in the community. Um, staff, or excuse me, family members and friends can come in to uh, a visiting area. We are not allowing visitations in the communal dining areas or the, um, uh, we are discouraging uh, elder rooms at this time. Of course, in, in a matter that a family member needs to go to an elder's room, 
we will approve and we are encouraging everyone coming in to be either vaccinated or bring that proof, but we are not denying anyone access to our visitation room. And like I said, elders are going out and they do not have to quarantine when they come back, vaccinated elders. So our next phase we're looking at is returning uh, our return to our, our volunteers coming in and then again, opening up. But we are looking at that a uh, little later, probably June. Uh, we really wanna see how the community spread and, and what's happening that at that point. Uh, anytime we will shut down in, unless, excuse me, anytime we will shut down if there is uh, an exposure of COVID. Uh, we continue to test staff weekly. Um, the state is saying we can test test staff monthly, but we, uh, I have said that no, we will continue for weekly testing and the rapid testing just for our safety and for everyone's safety. So the reality of COVID, 100% um, of Arizona nonprofits reported a loss of earned in revenue this year. We were one of them. Nonprofits saw less individual donors, co corporate giving, and support from foundations and grants. And again, this is uh, there was about over 400 uh, nonprofits report, um, surveyed in this um, research. And then there was increased expenses due to PPE supplies and technology. So we, we, we fall into all of that. We've had great uh, individual support this year and December had, was, was absolutely, people were very generous and, and continue to be generous. But we did notice the corporate giving uh, foundations and grants. So the future of nonprofits. This was in the Associated Press in March and more than one in three nonprofits are in jeopardy of closing within two years due to financial harm. So again, I'm, I'm sharing this because I'm going to also share what we're gonna be doing at St. Luke's. So again, one in three are in jeopardy. However, St. Luke's home will continue to beat the odds. This year, we have done it. Um, we're COVID free. Our vaccination rates surpassed national rates and we will thrive. We will not be the one in three that are gonna be in jeopardy. Our board, our staff, our elders, our families, we're dedicated. We will continue to beat the odds. So St. Luke's home goal moving forward is to thrive, is to continue to renovate our home, to make it beautiful, to bring more people in. Our census this year averaged about 50 individuals. We know that there are 54 beds. That means that it was about a 78% uh, occupancy, which hurt us because we were closed to admissions for six months. Again, purely based on the safety of our elders. We didn't want to bring COVID in. So our goal is continuing to thrive. I really wanna thank many of you and all, all of you actually on the call to that for your support and your gifts and your donations this past year. Again, this will continue to, it gives us hope that we will be able to get through the post COVID um, pandemic. We survived the pandemic. Um, and now we will survive the, the, the post COVID pandemic. So with that, I want to Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I have a little video that I would like to share and some of you have seen it, but this shows what we have done this past year behind the doors where our friends and family could not come and see us. So Cass, please.
Thank you. Thank you, Cass. So we just felt that that is the best way to show our year in review. And I want to thank Sally for putting those pictures together for us and for Cass to putting, for putting the music uh, with it. Um, that's what we've been up to this past year when no one could come in and, and say hello uh, face to face and could look through the windows and, and talk via phone. So um, next, with that, we felt, you know, we, we are on this next journey and we have done great work in the, this past year. And with that, we're ready to springboard into a, a new logo and, oh, not, not yet. <laughs> it's a surprise. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and the winner is we have a new logo. Um, as you know, it, it on the hundredth, it was um, the. This okay, we've moved on to item. Yes. Five, new <laughs> business. I did want to comment on the video that I did notice the new fashion in St. Luke's of longer hair. Yes, we noticed throughout. Okay, the, our new our new logo. Yes. <laughs> so okay, Cash, we can go back to it. So what we did, we felt that um, the logo that was for the hundredth ballet, we love the look of it, but we just wanted to to brighten it up a little bit. So. Um, Cass is like, what? I was on, I was on track. <laughs> but we'll be sending it out. Um, one thing we did change instead of the hundred years, we put um, uh, there we are. Um, so we kept the century of service because we truly believe that a century is definitely worth bragging and we have more years to come and so but we wanted to then say a lifetime of hope so as we move um forward we will be we're wrapping up actually all of our old logo stuff and you'll be seeing a, a fresh new new look um with the same with the same heart the same compassion and, and love just a little brighter colors so i wanted to share that and next, I wanted to remind folks that we are having a fundraiser right now and on our website that uh, we have our bylay and Cass, you can open that. Uh, if you go to our website, as we know, www.stlukeshometucson.org, on the front page, you're going to see this picture of the bylay. If you press on it and open it up, on the left-hand side, I would love for you all to press on the home and there are pictures of past bylays. It would have been our 102nd bylay. We missed last year's bylay due to COVID. Um, so we, our last bylay was the 100th, but we did want to honor the bylay and, and the years of, of the, the event that helped this home for so long. And then on the right side, part of the bylay is we have a new beginnings basket. And with that, you can click on, on that. And there is a pain, a pearl necklace, a Waterford crystal, and a picnic basket. Because again, this year is of new beginnings. Our, our logo is in new beginnings. It, we, we are moving forward from this past year that we all have um, gotten through together. So please uh, take the time and go to our website and purchase tickets and honor our bylay. Uh, we are having uh, actually a little bylay for the elders on the 30th. Uh, we're drawing for the basket and we are having mar mariachis um, on YouTube and, and dancers and we're gonna have a celebration in the home and we will be drawing the winner of the ticket at uh, around 1.45 with the elders. And we're going to live stream it on Facebook. So stay tuned. We are going to be uh, sharing that event with everybody. And Michael, for me, that's all the new business I had. If you want to open it up to the 
members. Oh, you're muted. Yeah. Yeah. I think a year from now, when some, I'm in a private conversation, I'm going to say to somebody, you're on mute. Uh, <laughs> this is very strange stuff. Um, I did want to, um, I appreciated it, uh, Linda, you let a little of the emotion sneak out when you were talking about having survived this year. And I think that's something that was most appropriate and something that everybody connected with St. Luke's has felt. We are just so glad to be where we are. Um, with that, I would like to open it up to anybody um, who wants to make a comment. Um, the board members are welcome to, but especially um, all the people who are joining us. Um, if you have any comment, I think there's a function for raising your hand, or you can just raise your hand and cast and figure all this out. I hope. Cass, you have to call. I have, I just have, oh, well, there's some. Oh, you got a thumbs up. Okay. Anybody a comment? Rudy. Oh, Marilyn, let me start with you. Yes, um, I just, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to tell everybody how grateful the, the residents, our elders are for the safety that we have felt all year. It's been hard on some of us, but it's been, there's just no, um, no resistance, no exaggerated passivity. There's just a great deal of gratitude for what Linda and staff and uh, all of us together have been able to accomplish. And I just want everybody to know that how grateful the, the elders are. Thank you. Uh, Rudy? So I just wanted to make a comment on the video. That was just a, a beautiful video to get the attention of what happened all through that year. And I did hear the little bit of emotion there, Linda, and it's, we're human. I myself almost got a little teary-eyed looking at that and the, the elders that have passed away. So a fantastic video. I think we should put that on Facebook. We should show the, the rest of the community what we're all about. Nancy? Uh, thanks, Michael. I wanted to echo uh, what Marilyn um, stated about the gratitude that I think, I know we all have for Linda and the staff for pulling us all through. And I'm emotional too. This is the second time I've seen this film and we saw it as a, at a board meeting, our last board meeting and we had a little cry fest then. I think we're all super emotional anyway about COVID and what this year has done uh, to us in general. But I don't know how Linda did it. I know she was extra careful in her own personal life, of course, as we all were, but um, extra careful and conscious because of the role she plays as the leader of, as the CEO of St. Luke's. So again, just, just, uh, Thank you for, for, to Linda, to all the staff, and to all the elders who endured um, a year of uh, isolation. Thanks. Mindy? Um, well, I would have been better if I went before Nancy, because now I'm going to start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the video is great, but kudos to um, the entire team. I mean, from the elders to the staff, you all did an amazing job hanging in there and getting through this year. And it's very um, inspiring to see the video, to see all the positives that were in there. And I loved seeing things on Facebook and the pictures to see people, to see all the elders really embracing it and enjoying life and making the most of, you know, a tough situation. But it looked like there were a lot of good times planned and um, the, the team there did a great job. So kudos to all of you. And I just, Michael, if I could add yeah. one more. Uh, I, I know as a board, we felt the isolation too. Um, uh, as board members in the past, in the past years, we've all been very active in going to St. Luke's and participating in 
events at St. Luke's, the town hall, the birthday parties, um, activities uh, with the elders. And the year I was president, I, I spent a lot of time as, as Mindy and Michael and all of you past presidents know at the home and got to know a lot of the elders almost on a personal basis, certainly on a first name basis. And um, I so enjoyed walking through the dining room and uh, elders calling out to me, or I'd go up and visit a few tables if, they, if it was a dinner time. And that's something that I, we talked about this at the board meeting, I truly missed. Uh, I mean, and also meetings, the Zoom meetings, they're, they, they uh, functioned so we could make decisions uh, and plans for St. Luke's, but I miss the camaraderie of actually being with the board in a room uh, and uh, the face-to-face -face interaction. So we're, we're talking about hopefully in the next month or two, uh, being able to, to do that again. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else just unmute yourself and talk up because I my screen doesn't have everybody on it. Anybody else? With that, then I think we are adjourned for this meeting and thank you all for coming and thank you everybody for all the work that's been done over the years. Yeah. And thank you. And just quickly, we have recorded this meeting and we will be posting it. We're going to download it on YouTube and put it on our website for anybody that may have missed it that you can uh, want to, to share that we'll have it for our friends and, and families that couldn't make it today. So thank you again for everyone as well and all your support this year. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>